everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about osteoporosis. So let's get into it. So the first thing, let's break down the word osteoporosis. So osteo is in reference to the bone and then porosis like porous, like holes in the bone. So think of it that way. So somebody who has osteoporosis has weak bones. So if we remember, bones are a natural living thing, right? So they are always remodeling themselves. We have our osteoblasts. These are responsible for making the bone. And our osteoclasts are responsible for breaking down the bone. And in people who don't have osteoporosis, these two things occur at an even pace. When you get osteoporosis, the osteoclast, so the cells that break down the bone, are working much quicker than the ones that make new bone. This makes our bones weak, it decreases the overall mass and strength of our bones, and makes us more susceptible to things like fractures. So who's at risk? Technically, everybody's at risk. Anybody who has bones is at risk for developing this, but certain people are at much higher risk. So starting with A, those who use alcohol frequently, so two or more drinks a day, increases your risk. The older you are, so even a 90-year-old is at higher risk than an 80-year-old. So as you get older, your risk increases. Those who are Asian, the first C is for corticosteroid use, so for people who've been on long-term use of steroids, or Caucasian ethnicity. Our second C is for those who have low calcium in their body. Either they don't get enough calcium through their diet, or their body doesn't make enough calcium, and they need to supplement. E is for those who have low estrogen levels. This is linked to menopause. Because what happens in menopause is you stop secreting that estrogen. You have some estrogen in your body, but you have a lot lower levels of estrogen than you did pre-menopause. And a lot of people, a lot of women, are diagnosed with osteoporosis within 10 years after completing menopause. And it's related to that low estrogen level. Our second E is for those who have eating disorders. Because you're malnourished, you're not getting enough calcium in your body low calcium from the eating disorder, that is a risk factor. Our first S is for smoking, so those who smoke cigarettes are at higher risk. And then being of small frame, so being a petite or relatively thin person puts you at higher risk. You have less bone overall to lose than a larger person, so you're automatically at risk because of that. And then our final S stands for sedentary lifestyle, so people who are inactive. They lead an inactive lifestyle. And then surgery, specifically GI surgery. So anything that involves removing part of the intestine or reducing the size of the stomach, those sort of surgeries can help decrease absorption of calcium. So those patients will have less calcium overall in their body, which puts them at higher risk for osteoporosis. When it comes to signs and symptoms, a tool we can use to remember them is frail. So your bones are weak and frail. So the F stands for fractures. People with osteoporosis are at much higher risk of having a fracture. So that might be the thing that happens. They don't know they have osteoporosis. Maybe they've had some of those risk factors. They have a fall, they fracture their wrist, which is quite common and then they come to see you in the hospital or the clinic setting, and that's when they get worked up for osteoporosis. So they are more likely to get fractures than people who don't have osteoporosis. R stands for the rounding of the upper back, which is known as dowager's hump. This is different than kyphosis. If we remember, kyphosis is like due to the spine, right? And it causes that like hunchback. The patient who has dowager's hump, they have a little the rounding, but they also are more like slumped in their posture, okay? So it's almost like they shrunk and then they curve. So it's a little bit different. A stands for a hard time breathing, so they're short of breath easier. So they have a hard time breathing because of the smaller lung capacity due to the compression on the discs. 
I is for intolerance of exercise, so activity. They get out of breath quickly with activity. And then L is for loss of height. A lot of people with osteoporosis will notice that they're shrinking, they're getting smaller. So if you compare their height at this visit to their previous year's visit, they might have shrunk a little, they might have gotten a little bit smaller. And then the other L is for low back pain, and then I snuck this in here too, neck pain or hip pain. So these would all be signs and symptoms of osteoporosis. And how was it diagnosed? The standard test is the bone mineral density. So this is a dual x-ray, and what it shows is the minerals, like the calcium, in the bones. Very important patient teaching, if they're going to have this done, they should not take any calcium supplements for 24 hours prior because they could throw off the results. And then who should have this done? Women greater than the age of 65, men greater than the age of 70, and anybody who has increased risk. When it comes to treatment, it varies. It varies depending on how severe we think the osteoporosis is. Some practitioners will use something called the FRAX tool. So this is a risk assessment. So what is your risk within the next 10 years of having a fracture? Is it a high risk, a low risk, a moderate risk, that kind of thing. If it's low risk, they're going to recommend things like weight-bearing exercise and calcium and vitamin D in your diet, or even supplemental calcium and vitamin D if you're not getting it in your diet. When they're at the higher risk of having a fracture, that's when they start prescribing medications. And there's quite a variety of meds that they could possibly prescribe. So the first and most popular choice are bisphosphonates. These are things maybe you've already heard of, like Fosamax and Boniva. I have a whole video on Fosamax. I'll put it in the description box below if you want to check that out. But what do they do? They stop the body from reabsorbing the bone tissue. So in turn, this makes the bones stronger, less likely to have those fractures. Hormone replacement is also very popular. So for women, estrogen replacement, or for men, testosterone replacement, these are options. When it comes to estrogen, estrogen is very helpful but it has a lot of dangers associated with it, specifically blood clots, right? So if somebody has a high risk for clots already, or maybe they've already had a clot previously, estrogen is not going to be safe for them to have. So we have an alternative, raloxifene. This is very similar to estrogen, but without those dangerous side effects that come along with estrogen. Bonsetee helps to stimulate bone growth. So that's really good if the body is having an issue with that, not building enough bone. This one is a daily injection though. And then finally, calcitonin helps to decrease bone reabsorption and decrease osteoclast activity. If we remember from the beginning of the video, we talked about the issue with osteoporosis. The osteoclasts and the osteoblasts are not working at the same rate. The clasts are working way too fast. So calcitonin helps to slow them down. Some special patient teaching though, something we need to keep an eye on, people who are on calcitonin are at higher risk for hypocalcemia. So when it comes to laboratory values, we need to keep an eye on that for them. The big complication of osteoporosis, which I'm sure will not be a shock to you, is fractures, right? We've been talking about that this whole time, fractures and your risk for having a fracture. So wrist fractures are the most common type of fracture people get. And hip fractures are the most dangerous type of fractures. Hip fractures and spinal fractures could potentially be deadly. So it's very important that we prevent these complications from happening. And when it comes to preventing osteoporosis from happening in the first place, because if you remember when I said who's at risk, we all are because we all have bones. Some things we can do to help decrease our risk for getting osteoporosis include exercise every day. So some sort of routine, regular weight-bearing exercise. It's good for your body. Making sure we get enough calcium and vitamin D, either through our diet or dietary supplementation, so like pills. Decrease alcohol and caffeine or give them up entirely. No alcohol, no caffeine. No smoking. 
So don't start smoking, or if you are smoking already, try to stop, try to quit. And then general fall safety things, like adequate lighting, don't use throw rugs that you can trip on, things like that. So that was my video on osteoporosis. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know, and if not, I'll see you on the next one.